But right now, I'm in a place that uh, if you've watched this channel, you are quite familiar with. We are in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania at the Gettysburg Museum of History. And in past videos, we've shown a lot of unboxings, showing you know some of the, the things that come into the museum on a weekly basis. Well, I can't be here all the time, every time a box comes in. So we're going to do something a little bit different today and show some of the new stuff that has come into the museum. Well, actually it's old stuff, but it's new to the museum. But anyway, lots of cool things. And I think today we're gonna to focus on Confederate artifacts from the Civil War. that we're in a new location. We've never filmed in here before, so I wanted to introduce my new office. Um, we've been talking about the annex building to the museum. We're currently working on that project. We're working with a design architect right now. It's going to be a long process because we're trying to do it right, but for now this is my temporary office in the new annex. So I just wanted to let you check it out. We, this, is, this is where I'm um, we're going to film some videos for a while, and um, we're, we're also going to try a new approach at featuring a, several smaller artifacts instead of one big one. Um, we're still going to do some of those as well, but this is kind of a new concept that we have. It, it, it's kind of similar to an unboxing, except we're not going to unbox the items. You know, JD comes here to film from time to time and we don't always have boxes coming in at that exact moment but we have amazing items that come in all the time so we're going to feature a few really incredible artifacts that have come in in the last few months and we'll just do a few of them at a time we grouped a few today and these are going to be confederate civil war items and these are all fairly new to the museum and i'm going to start with a cap box right now this is a Confederate cap box. Actually, let me correct myself. This is a Union cap box. It started life as a Union cap box. Um, usually Confederate cap boxes have a lead finial and a single back strap. This has a double back strap and a brass finial. So this is actually a Union cap box, but it was repurposed by a Confederate soldier. And it has a Confederate first national flag carved into it, which makes it very unique. And it says CSA. It also has a tag on it, which says it was, it's really hard to read because it's uh, the, the adhesive over the years has seeped through the paper, but it actually says it was picked up near Rock Creek, and, which is near Spangler Spring in the Culps Hill area. Um, what's really cool about this is it's featured in what we call the, the Bible of Gettysburg Relics, and that's this book, Gettysburg Battlefield Relics and Souvenirs by Mike O'Donnell. Now this book was written several years ago. We have several items in this book and I'd seen this in the book years ago and um, I was actually offered this cap box many years ago but declined because the price was astronomical. I recently was re-offered it by another person and had changed hands again and I was able to trade for it. But I'm going to show you in the book where it is. And this book, when you get a Gettysburg relic that's in this book, it's usually pretty good provenance. Most of the items in here were vetted very thoroughly. So here it is in the book featured under the Spangler Spring section. But it's really a very interesting and unique piece just because whoever carried it added this artwork to it. And if you look inside, another thing that's interesting is it still has some of the caps in it, some of the uh, old copper caps. Um, so that's always nice to see. But Again, a very interesting um, soldier added artwork to a Confederate or a Union later repurposed as a Confederate cap box found at Gettysburg. We're going to have a look at another really interesting artifact that came in very recently. This is a Confederate States of America. Um, CS, it's called an egg plate because of the shape. 
And this is in obvious relic condition. This was dug from the ground at some point. Um, we don't have a recovery location on this, unfortunately, so I can't say it's from Gettysburg or anywhere else. I would assume it's from Virginia. The majority of the relics in, that come out on the East Coast tend to be from Virginia. And the, the prongs are broken off the back, unfortunately, but um, it would have had a, a, like a T-type um, bridge on the back that would have two prongs for the one part of the belt and another prong for the other part of the belt. But they're extremely rare. Um, there's a lot of fakes of these too, so you really gotta watch it, but this has been authenticated by the best in the business. And um, yeah, I recently got it in a trade. I've always wanted one. I've always been afraid to buy them out in the wild, but because of um, who owned this before and, and some of the people who have looked at it were 100% confident that it's absolutely authentic. But again, it's one that you don't see very often the CS egg plate. Another very unique Confederate related artifact that came in fairly recently um, has, has an amazing story. Now, some of you may know, um, I have a connection with Mickey Dolans from the Monkees, being that um, my girlfriend and partner, uh, sister is married to him, so she's his brother, sister-in-law. And so um, I was contacted by one of his band members uh, and, and they had some artifacts that they didn't know what to do with and they, they had actually con uh, contacted the Museum of the Confederacy. Now he's originally from the Virginia area, um, but they decided to donate it to us. So they brought him up um, a little while ago and, and it was really a, 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 an interesting story. Um, this is actually a piece of the, the um, draperies or, or um, uh, curtains from the Confederate White House. And when he brought it to me, he just had a story. He said my aunt who lived in Virginia, was very old, had this from a family member and said it was from the Confederate White House. And I was like, well, how do we really know that? You know, I mean, I'm sure I could research it, find other examples of this pattern online, um, but it was in a really loose frame and it was sealed on the back. And I said, do you mind if I take this frame apart? And he goes, no, I donate it to you. You can do what you want. So um, we were in the museum and he was pre presenting this to me and I, I, I carefully removed the back of the frame. And the frame wasn't that old. It was probably from the 50s. So I didn't mind taking it out of that frame. And stuck to the back or folded up in the back was this letter folded in half. It was folded like that. And it had the complete story of where this came from and how they got it. And basically, it was a family member who was friends with Mrs. Jefferson Davis, and when they fled, she helped her pack her belongings and they, she gave her some of the curtains. And I guess over the years, um, you know, that it was discarded, but she kept a piece of it as a memento. And it has the full details on here and the names and everything. And I just thought that was amazing. And he, he didn't even know it was back there. Um, but um, again, I, I, I thank him for donating this and, and what a neat story. Um, you know, and, and it's, it's, it's neat how people saved these little mementos back in those days. And uh, this is one of the pieces that survived. I, I believe there may be more pieces of these draperies. I think they may have a piece in the Confederate um, Museum in Richmond, but um, now we have a piece at the Gettysburg Museum of History. I want to take a little bit closer look at this letter and this piece of fabric that came out of the Confederate White House. Now, the letter says uh, that it's dated February the 20th of 1929, and it says here that this piece of damask was given by Mrs. Robert Hill of Richmond, Virginia, and that Mrs. Hill's mother, uh, Mrs. Bernard of Richmond, Virginia, was an intimate friend of Mrs. Jefferson Davis. Okay, so here it talks about this damask, and you may not know what damask is. I actually had to look it up myself. Uh, this is a really high-end fabric, and what makes it high-end is that damasks are woven on a loom setup that has a real high end count on the warp and the weft. Uh, so what this helps to do is to achieve like really, really fine detail in the fabric. So the warp and the weft, and I'm not trying to pass myself off as an expert on textiles here, uh, but the warp yarns go vertically and the weft yarns go horizontally. Uh, anyway, so you get this kind of a satin finish. So this would have been some pretty high-end material that was coming out of the Confederate White House 
in the Civil War. Yeah, interesting. So I want to talk about another Confederate belt buckle or buck belt rig. Um, this is a Confederate general's belt rig, complete with part of the belt. Now it has some loss on the back, so we have it in this glass case, and I don't really want to take it out. The the loss, you know, it's very fragile, and um, the Confederate belt rigs are extremely rare. But when you get into the the general officer model like this, it's even more rare. And um, it has a gilt finish on it. It says CS for Confederate States. And I, I put a original period uh, photograph or CDV of General Lee next to it to show kind of what they look like. Now, General Lee did not wear a CS belt rig. He, he always wore his home state of Virginia belt rig. But this came in fairly recently, almost a year ago. Um, but a friend of mine who deals in World War II material had pulled it out of a collection. He really didn't know what to do with it. He did plenty of research, so he certainly knew the value of it. But we were able to trade a few items, and uh, this item came to the, the, uh, the uh, Gettysburg Museum of History. And Confederate anything is rare, um, but something to this magnitude is, is just, um, you know, pull, pulling something like this out of an unknown collection that had been buried for years is very, very unusual. And we're really happy to get it. Um, you know, it's the only time I've ever seen a Confederate General's belt rig out in the wild available. You know, they're usually deep within the most prestigious collections and rarely come up for sale. So we're very happy to get this at the Gettysburg Museum of History. All right, well, there you go. Uh, those are a few of the newer items that have come in here at the Gettysburg Museum of History. We're going to do a few more videos like this. Uh, maybe the next one focusing on some of the new World War II items that have arrived at the museum. But anyway, all kinds of cool stuff coming in here constantly.